Lucha Hunters is all about the release. You know, there's just nothing better for me than having caught, you know, a big snapper or a big kingfish, taking the greatest care with it, getting it back in the water and then seeing it power off. You really just can't argue with, with more fish in the ocean. And if you can go out there as a, an angler and target and catch these big fish and release them for others to catch again, um, you know, it's just a win-win situation. So Moocha Hunters is the sustainable fishing competition. sort of um, came about after I'd entered a couple of local fishing comps, uh, your traditional comps where you go out there targeting the biggest fish, you come back and at the prize giving there's just this mountain of fish that's then, you know, dished out. Um, and, you know, I'd go to a couple of these comps and I always looked at that pile of fish and thought, surely there's a better way of doing this. We've had, it started as a small local thing on Waiaki, you know, a group of 20 fishos and it's just grown from there. We've now got a crew over Coromandel that are into it. Um, there's a bunch of barrier boys that are, that are right into it as well. So, you know, there's scope for it to grow. Um, so far it's been pretty small, um, but, you know, I'd like the, the catch and release thing to, to continue to grow. This season is going to be my third season in the Moocha Hunters and uh, what I've found um, that's really got me excited about being involved is, um, is firstly the community of people who are involved in it. Um, it's been a good platform to meet like-minded fishos who have you know, sort of the same um, beliefs and thoughts about fishing. As a moocher hunter, we still go out there to catch a feed of fish, you know. We all enjoy fresh fish to eat and we've all got mouths to feed. You know, we're just more selective about the ones that we keep and um, we really believe that those larger fish should be back in the, the ocean. You know, they play a really important role in the ecosystem and they're too valuable to keep just to eat. Um, I've also found that uh, there's far more willingness for people to share ideas and spots and techniques if they know that a lot of these large fish are going back. Um, that's certainly the case for people who do a lot of land-based fishing because as a land-based fisho, once you find that, that spot that's the biz, you tend to keep that a pretty closely guarded secret uh, because you don't want it to get worked too hard. If you do get that, that big prized fish that if you've got your mat and something to record it then you're going to be able to just, just get a memory for life and let that fish go and it's just a win-win situation. Still seeing it swim off is just oh, it's epic and the fish are all lit up, they've got the blue the snappers, have got blues running through them, they've got all the blood pulsing through them and they look amazing. Swimming off shot is, um, that's the money shot really. Because of the catch and release and because of the, um, the videos, there's scope to do all sorts with the competition. So we've, you know, we've had um, a category called Critter Collector this last season where you know, there's you know, a whole list of different species you can target. So you know, on that list was um, bronze whalers for example. So most of my season was spent targeting uh, my first bronzy, and that was probably the highlight of the last season was landing landing a bronzy, even though it was it was a tag team effort. But um, you know that was just awesome getting getting that footage and releasing that fish it was cool. Um, and then at the same time you, you go out targeting a bronzy one day, and then the next day you're out there trying to catch a grey mullet um, or a 
Rory or you know, um, flounder. So it just opens up the whole world of angling so that you're not just targeting snapper and you're not just targeting kingfish. You're sort of, you know, it's really testing your skills over a wide variety of species.